one of the most visible and violent gangs in Chinatown, was known as the Flying Dragons. Drug trafficking, they did extortions, kidnappings, they did gambling, they did all of those things. The new face of organized crime, the Chinese connection. Johnny Ng, machine gun Johnny, suspected in multiple homicides while running a gang of heroin smugglers and drug dealers, convicted of 14 narcotics charges. He was high profile, he was charismatic. He, he, he used violence. He's straight out of central casting. Nice clothes, very dapper dresser. He saw the films made about gangsters. He thought he was one of those people. It was Bruce Lee on steroids and with a very active life of drugs, girls, and spending big money. He has that one great feature that everybody has in their 20s. They feel invincible. Along the way, he earned a fierce reputation. His predecessor was called the scientist for his cool, calm demeanor. They called Ng Machine Gun Johnny. Gangsters like these monikers. They quite like the, the, the glamour of having a great nickname. That's the sort of thing that makes a story and sells a story. You know, the guy who's a little bit bland, who, who keeps, keeps a low profile, who hasn't got this sort of image, who doesn't go around machine gunning people. You know, who cares? Inside Chinatown, he was also known as Onion Head. There were a couple of other guys uh, who had uh, equally strange names, but he was one of them, and that stuck out, uh, Onion Head. The story was that if you crossed him, you ended up with tears in your eyes. The, um, and so just like an onion, and that was it. Onion Head or Machine Gun Johnny, Ng was as cunning as he was violent. He was a rising star. He immigrated to the United States when he was very young, but he was a sort of homegrown American gangster. The Flying Dragons gave him a gang and a platform to launch a new business. He could get access to large quantities of heroin in Hong Kong, so it was very easy for him. As with any good smuggler, Johnny Yang used a whole host of things to bring drugs in. Belts that had false backs, and you could put hundreds and hundreds of belts in a shipment, and they would have the drugs stuffed inside. Stuffed animals, which I always love, because it takes a mean customs agent to slice open a little teddy bear even in tea packets, so that the tea would come in and the actual heroin would be inside the packet. The Drug Enforcement Administration set up a specific unit to track Asian heroin and gangsters like Johnny Ng. We had a hodgepodge, a real collection of personalities. It became really like you read about sports teams where things really click. It was really like the 1960 Yankees or something like that, you know. When I first came to Group 41, I asked two agents in the group, who's the biggest guy here? Who's the biggest Chinese target here? And they said, Chung Tao, Onion Head, Johnny Ng. They came into their own by taking down a dragon. DEA seized millions. One DEA seizure form that I got was uh, 28 million. Not bad for the uh, leader of a Chinatown street gang. We had everything under control and we were moving forward. We we're moving up the chain now. We knew we were into the Flying Dragons. I have no doubt that, you know, Johnny Yang began to feel the heat. In January 1989, the biggest flying dragon in Chinatown took off, disappearing into thin air. It was in 1989 that we got information from DEA that uh, Chun Ying might, might be coming to Hong Kong, might be coming to Hong Kong, but not for sure. Tony Pang was a Hong Kong national who worked for the ICAC, the Independent Commission Against Corruption. Corruption in Hong Kong was rampant. Oh, it was so bad, it's indescribable. I hate corruption. And in 75, uh, I joined the ICAC just to fight corruption. The ICAC did not know he was here. The police didn't know he was here. They came across him by accident in the course of a fraud investigation. 
It was a police raid on what's called the Mama San, who runs a, um, I guess, a call girl type operation. While busting a brothel, they came across his name on the client list. The ICAC immediately said, OK, I think we have something, someone important. Agent Pang was told to go to Wing's listed business address and take down one of the biggest gangsters wanted by the US. It was a 15 minutes ride. Took a taxi to Chim Sa Choi. When I arrived, I saw the guy coming out. And I recognized him as Johnny Ng. So I approached him, and then and I taped on his shoulder. I said, are you Johnny Ng? He said, yeah. I said, oh, Johnny, can you come back to my office with me right away? He said, I'm going to arrest you. I don't have a handcuff. I'm not armed. But he was calm. He didn't put up a row or a fight or something like that. So I took him back to the office by a taxi. The Royal Hong Kong police immediately seized his assets. I think they seized over $40 million. In October 1991, after nearly three years in custody in Hong Kong, machine gun Johnny Ng lost his extradition fight and was brought back to a Manhattan prison cell. He gets to New York, and he gets put in a wing where other high-profile, well-known criminals one of them being John Gotti. He believed that he was kind of untouchable. He could pay for the very, very best lawyers. He ended up retaining John Gotti's lawyer, Jerry Shargell. Mr. Shargell was very confident from all reports that he was going to beat the case. That was a comment that was made to the prosecution table by Jerry Shargell saying, oh, my client has ordered Peking duck for 40 at the Triple Eight restaurant for Friday. When I said that about the Peking duck, that, that they were all plenty worried on the prosecution side. <laughs> they figured that the uh, jury would be in on Friday and that he'd be walking out Friday night a free man, and they ordered Peking duck to celebrate. The jury came in with a verdict the following Monday, December 14th, 1992 and found Johnny Ng guilty of 14 of the 17 narcotics charges against him. Johnny Ng was sentenced to 24 years behind bars. I thought the sentence was appropriate, and, you know, it communicated the message that needed to be sent to the community. The judge said that if you ever come before my court again, you know, due to all the harm you've caused to countless people, including kids, uh, you'll go to jail for the rest of your life. It changed the whole mood of Chinatown. It changed people's thinking about Chinatown. Just because you lock up somebody like Johnny Yang doesn't mean that the heroin trade is, is gone. Uh, there's other characters fill the void. Johnny Ng served his time and was released from prison on November 8, 2010. He hasn't been heard from since. As far as we know, he, he's disappeared, possibly into China, but nobody knows for sure. He had 20 years nearly to think about this. He would have been planning his next move. I would think someone like him, who's obviously quite intelligent, he would want to lay low. He doesn't want to go back and spend the rest of his life in prison but it's in his blood. He was a gangster. Can he stay out of it? Only time will tell.